Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be specifically looking at dental x-rays, in particularly the ortho pantomogram. Dental x-rays or radiographs can take multiple formats to visualize different teeth of interest. To name a few, these may include periapical x-rays, which show a single tooth from root to crown, and biting x-rays, which are used to observe potential decay in molar teeth. An ortho pantomogram x-ray is a wide view panoramic x-rays of the patient's upper and lower jaw and associated dentition from root to crown in a single image, which is not possible with periapical or bite wing x-rays. An OPG x-ray is especially helpful in the planning of orthodontic treatment as it provides a full overview of the teeth and highlights non-erupted and impacted teeth. A further advantage of an OPG x-ray is that it can help assess a patient's wisdom teeth and reveal whether a patient has potential TMJ prop. There are many other useful indications for carrying out an OPG and these include yet not limited to the general dental health evaluation for caries or pulp origin disease, trauma assessment for teeth or jaw fractures, infection evaluation of sinusitis, periodontitis or periapical abscesses, assessing any bony pathology such as a tumour or a cystic lesion, any foreign body localization, salivary stone identification, growth and development monitoring of pediatric teeth for location, shape, angle, assessment of supernumerary teeth presence, and tooth germ absence to prevent or prepare for future aesthetic issues. They are also used for assessment of placement of implant and being able to determine the height of the bone. So there's a large amount of data visible on an OPG machine and usually it appears quite daunting to interpret an OPG unless a systematic approach is used. An OPG is basically a 2D view of a 3D object and you will naturally get some degree of distortion due to the flattening of the curve of the mandible and dentition and this will give you an overall view of these structures and this requires the viewer to reinterpret these in their mind for a 3D appreciation of the image. I will also share with you a mnemonic at the end that will allow you to systematically go through an OPG and this will identify the structures, the hard and the soft tissue structures and being able to identify these. So a systematic review of an OPG can simplify analysis of what may first appear to be quite a complicated image. So the first thing that I would recommend is that firstly, count all the teeth present and their position, noting missing or misplaced teeth. Number two, follow the contours of the mandible from right, left side of the image to the left, noting the condylar head morphology the size, the shape, the continuity of the external border of the ramus and the body, and the uniformity of the internal density of the bone. Also note the path of the inferior alveolar neurovascular canal ending in the mental foramen. Number three, identify the maxillary sinuses and note any opacities or lucencies that may be present. Follow the cortical outline for continuity. Number four, check peripheries of the image for cervical spine, zygomatic, submandibular or hyoid abnormalities. So you can also see soft tissue structures that can be identified because of the density. We will go through an OPG and see how many areas you are able to identify. So A is the ramus of the mandible, B is the condylar head of the mandible, C is the body of the mandible, D is the canal of the inferior alveolar neurovascular bundle. E is the nasal septum. F is the maxillary sinuses. G is the hyoid bone. H is the cervical spine. I is the infraorbital rim. J is the external auditory meatus. K is the coronoid process of the mandible. L is the tuberosity of the maxilla. M, hard palate. As we said, there are soft tissue structures that can also be seen on an OPG. So we'll go through and identify the soft tissues. A is the pinna of the ear. B is the soft palate. C is the dorsum of tongue. Note air space between the tongue and the palate. D is the oropharyngeal airspace. E is the inferior nasal turbinate. F is the epiglottis. So what is the mnemonic that we can use in order to help us 
remember the hard and the soft tissue structures when looking at an OPG x-ray. So the anatomical features of a mandible visible on a DPT or a OPG, if you remember the acronym CRABS MINCE. So C equals the condyle, R equals the ramus, A equals the angle of mandible, B equals the body, S equals the symphyseal region, sigmoid notch, M equals the mental foramen, I equals the inferior alveolar canal, and N equals the neck of condyle. C equals coronoid process, and E equals the external oblique ridge. So what are some of the radiographic landmarks visible on a OPG of the maxilla, temporal bone, zygoma, and surrounding areas? If you remember the acronym PIEZOGAS, P-I-E-Z-O-G-A-S, where P equals the pterygopalatine fossa, P equals the pterygoid plate, I equals inferior conchi, I equals inferior wall of maxillary sinus, E equals eminence, the articular eminence, Z equals zygoma and zygomatic arch, O equals orbit, G equals the glenoid fossa, S equals the styloid process, S equals the spine, the cervical spine. What are some of the soft tissue shadows that appear on a OPG? Well, if you remember, step which is S is for soft palate, T equals tongue, E equals epiglottis, P equals a pinna, and the posterior pharyngeal wall. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you found it very useful. Please kindly like and subscribe our channel. It really supports the channel grow further. Until next time, take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.